Hey, everybody, and welcome back to, what are we on, the third? Is this the third node? The third? Third episode? Third episode. I think it's the third. It's this the is third our third episode. episode. There's just been so many, I can't keep up. It's the fourth episode. <laughs> no way! Because <laughs> we, we, did, we did one by ourselves, and then we did one with Char. And Sam, yeah, and then we did one and with, Heather. with Heather, and now this is our fourth one. Well, welcome to our officially the fourth uh, video podcast put on by Jody and Court. This is the new thing that we're experimenting with in our uh, in our pursuit to changing the world one human being at a time through happiness and love. Uh, <laughs> and today we're doing sort of something kind of fun. So. We are interviewing each other as a part of a project that Chris Matthews is putting on through the uh, Christmas Pass Museum, the Coleman Museum. And uh, so this is kind of cool. It's called At Home in the Christmas Pass. And since we can't be out and entering into the museum right now, he has put it out there to community members to uh, invite people into their homes and let people uh, in the community sort of get a taste of the, what the community is like right now. And I think this is really cool because it's eventually going to be a piece of history that people look back on as well. So we're super excited to be doing this and to be a part of it. And we're going to make our podcast today uh, in line with Chris's project. So um, we are Jody and Court, and we're two chicks from the crows past <laughs> who are teachers but we're also our our side gig is that we are starting up a business and it's an empowerment business uh called jody and court yeah where we are striving to empower people to um take what they know what their purpose and intentions are in life and have the greatest impact on the world that they can totally yeah so, uh, right. let's, so, we're going to jump right into the lightning round question. Yeah, let's do so that. This, okay. Do okay. you want to start, Jode? Yeah, me you questioning me? you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm ready? ready? I'm nervous. Okay. Who are you? I'm Courtney. Courtney Ken, granddaughter hey. of Belle and Bill Kovach, <laughs> daughter of Pam Weigel, used to be Weigel, is now Van Plew, and Mike Weigel. Oh, there we go. Whew. What community do you live in within the Curzis Pass? Uh, I was raised in Bellevue, but I now live in Coleman. But I've actually lived in every community except for Frank. That's impressive. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up mostly, like I said, when I was in the past, I grew up in Bellevue. And, uh, but I actually kind of moved back and forth between Bellevue and Lethbridge a little bit as a kid. But mostly I grew up in the Curzis Pass in Bellevue. And what's your favorite color, Courtney? Purple. Clearly, I'm wearing I it. That. <laughs> um, other than the Crow's Nest Museum, what's your favorite hidden gem of the Crow's Nest Pass? Um... <laughs> so First thing. At the ski hill, as you go through the bush trail, when I was a kid, uh, when I was uh, like teen, pre-teen kind of age, we always used to do the night skiing up there. And as you're coming into the bush trail, you can kind of like whoop, up into this little secret spot in the, in the trees. And we'd, we'd hang out there and think that we're all like really bad kids and breaking the rules when really we weren't <laughs> as much as we thought we were. But it was like our little secret hiding spot. So there's, if you just like zoom it kind of into the trees off of the top of the bush trail, that's the secret gem. That's a hidden gem in the Crimson's Pass. Yeah, we used to ski down through a trail through the trees and come out on the pipeline. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's not allowed anymore. <laughs> Anyways, back to the questions. Um, okay. Where would you go on a perfect vacation? Oh, that's a hard one too, but I'll go with um, Italy <laughs> um, to a cottage. Um, in like the Orvieto region and I would be hopefully living with like a family there on a on a homestead that's our vineyard and learning how to cook from them and helping them in their in their wine practicing and that would be 
strangest thing, but that is like the all time perfect vacation for me. <laughs> cooking with Italians and drinking wine together. That's, I don't think very many people would disagree with you. <laughs> um, beards or clean shaven? Um, neither. I like like a little scruff because that would be beard, I guess, maybe on the beard side, but I don't like beards. No, I can't say beards because <laughs> I refuse to let my husband grow a beard. Clean shaven. Okay. <laughs> um, what's your favorite aspect of Crow's Nest past history? I love the stories, and I think that's because of my grandma. So my grandma, uh, Belle Kovach, is an historian, and she actually works at the museum a lot, but her passion is looking back she looks at she could look at old photographs for days and days and weeks and weeks and weeks on end and uh and she does that actually but in the process she she finds all of the individual stories of these people who lived and how they all meld together and make the history what it is and i just think it's really neat uh, sitting down with her and she can have a picture and she's like oh that was that person's house and then this and then like she could just tell it's history through stories and I just think we have a lot of really neat stories and especially since our community is such a conglomerate of different nationalities and like I love that one of my favorite experiences in the last five years was when I moved into what they call what we call this kids Maraville because the Mara family has all lived there in that area and I got to live across the street from Maraville and it was like a big thing for me but it's because we have those those stories that kind of just kind of keep getting passed on uh even though the the people are changing now and it's not quite like we're not the history is changing um we're creating new history uh, I like that there's that playful aspect of the stories and families and stuff that continue to be relevant and, and present even today and what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, pistachio or the sea salt caramel one that they had at the ice cream store last year. And skiing, snowboarding, or relaxing in the lodge? Which one is you? Skiing. Okay, done. All right, that was fun. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Who are you? Jody Peebles used to be a Vaston Hout. It's a really big family. That's all I'll say. <laughs> we all know the Vaston Hout. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what community do you live in within the Crows' Pass? Um, currently in Blairmore, but I've also lived in Hillcrest as well, but just those two communities I've lived in. Thanks. Where did you grow up? I grew up in the Crows' Pass. I grew up in Hillcrest, and then when I was 12-ish, we moved to Blairmore. Nice. And what's your favorite color? Purple. Yeah! <laughs> Other than the Christmas Museum, what's your favorite hidden gem of the Christmas Pass? I love Star Creek Falls. Star Creek mm -hmm. Falls is like my favorite little tucked away waterfall, and it's one that's not like marked really. Um, you kind of just have to know it's there to know it's there and it's not very far. So it's really close to the edge of town and it's easy to get to easy for kids to get to. And it's, it's definitely my favorite. Totally. That's a good one. Uh, where would you go on a perfect vacation? This one, I'm not much of a vacationer. So, cause I'm not much of a tourist. So for me, a perfect vacation is camping. Camping in a place where there's mountains and water and we can hike and we can swim and we can mountain bike and have campfires. And like that's, that is the perfect vacation for me. Um, so really a staycation works for me too <laughs> because we can do all those things right here in the Crozes Pass. So I, it's funny that you say that because I – had this really awesome realization last summer where you know how every Friday our highway just is like bumper to bumper cars of people who are coming in from the city and either coming here or proceeding into BC and and I had this realization I'm like oh my gosh like I I could camp literally in my backyard because it's you know you know like we if I can't get out to a campsite I don't really even need to it's just amazing where we live hey I know we often, 
when my parents will take the kids for a week or so, we often just do a staycation and stay here and just climb all the mountains that we can't climb with the kids or do the mountain biking that we can't do with the kids, but we yeah. just stick around home. That's awesome. Yeah. Even now too, right? Like we're, we're, we're all sort of like kind of isolating and stuff like that. It's, it's, I feel like it's so easy here. We're so fortunate. We are yeah. so lucky. We can still yeah. go outside and yeah. Yeah. Okay, beards or clean shaven? I like a little bit, not a full beard, but like a little bit's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the rest is clean shaven. I like, yeah. Did your dad ever give you whisker for like whisker oh, rubs? Oh, my dad that. used to have the worst mustache. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite aspect of Christmas past history? Uh, I have to kind of echo you. The first thing that came to mind when I asked you that question is the, the families. So the, the historical families, Maraville was the first thing that popped into my head. And just those, the, how you can talk to somebody who's older and that has lived here for a really long time, maybe their whole life, and you can always connect them back to your own family. Yeah. There's always somebody that they know, some thread, some story about your Oma that they can tell you. And I just, I love how connected everybody was, you know, like 50, 60 years ago and how that kind of trickles down to, to us now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Well, since I can't eat dairy, that's hard. So ice cream... I really like, there's a um, raspberry lime sorbet that is really, really, really good. I don't know what the brand is. It's super expensive, like stupid expensive, but it's so good. The raspberry lime sorbet. Done. That'd be my I'd favorite. like to try that. Can you get it at IGA? You can. All right. Yeah. You, break, <laughs> you break the bank a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do that for ice cream. <laughs> Um, skiing, snowboarding, or relaxing in the lodge? Ah, uh, skiing. Yeah, nice. Hands down. All right. So, we are meant to talk about a little bit of, if we were to pass on a message, um, what would that be? And it was pretty quick when we were chatting about this before the video. Uh, it, was just, it was sort of there, and it's one that we talk about all the time, and we say in all of our workshops and things like that that we do in the community and online and it is jody row 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 your boat <laughs> so we're going to leave you with a little message about one of our favorite childhood songs and it probably you'll never think of it the same ever again which is a good thing so row 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 your boat gently down the stream i want you to think about that for a second row 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 your boat it's your boat it's not your mama's boat it's not your boss's boat it's not your kid's boat it's nobody else's boat but yours which also means it's your responsibility your responsibility to know where it's going how it's getting there who's part of your boat because there can be people in your boat you just have to be in charge and whether or not your boat's aligned with your intentions and your core values and where you want to head. And how you know when it isn't is when it is not flowing gently down the stream. So when you're misaligned, when other people are in your boat and they're paddling in different directions and you're getting pulled here and pulled there, and maybe your vision as to where you want to go is kind of foggy and it's not super clear or maybe it's somebody else's idea it's not your true idea then it feels like you're flowing upstream and you're working really hard or maybe you're going in circles and that's the the clue as to you need to figure out okay what's wrong what's missing and take back control of your boat because it should be flowing gently down the stream Second half of that is merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Not in struggle, struggling, 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 <laughs> struggling, or angrily, 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 or 
fill in the blank. It's merrily, 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 merrily. Um, our natural state is a state of joy. Our natural state of most ease is a state of love. And when we live in that state of joy and then love and, and uh, vibrate at a vibration of gratitude, life is merry. And when we're going downstream and we are taking control of our boats and we are, we are designing the life that we want to be living rather than living it by default, by the default of others' opinions, that's when life feels merry. And that's when you're going gently down the stream. And the, the song, the little, the, the song ends with life is but a dream. And it's the perfect, it's the perfect ending because we are all designed innately to create. You think about it and we're always creating things. We're creating new, uh, new artwork for our walls. We're <clears throat> designing homes. We're creating lesson like as teachers we create more we recreate our lesson plans all the time because we get bored to just sit and and be um i don't know apathetic we it's it's boring to just sit and repeat and repeat and repeat and get stuck in the same old thing it's boring and and that's because we're designed to create a life is but a dream meaning that whatever it is that you dream up that some way trickles into whatever the reality is that you're living right now. So think about this. And the way that this works is that when you dream something up or you put an image of something in your mind, whether, and this is good, bad, and ugly, right? So this could be um, like total financial freedom or health in your body, or it might be sickness of the things that you're thinking about. So think of it this way. Say you want to get a new vehicle and you, you decide, hey, I want it to be this red Jeep. And all of a sudden, maybe before you never saw any red Jeeps around, and all of a sudden you just start seeing them all the time. Has that ever happened to you? Where you, you think of something or someone says something and then you just hear it, hear it, hear it, and see it, see it, see it. It's because our brain is wired when we think a thought. It opens up that um, ability to start to see the possibilities that are going to lead to making that thought become a reality. We're just so wired to do that. It's part of this creative side of us. So um, to tie that all in together, I, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, I'll leave it with this thing that I say to my daughter as often as I can when I put her to bed, which is to dream big dreams because it's only when you dream big dreams that big dreams can actually come true. So life is but a dream. So dream them big. That's right. Row your yeah. boat and dream big. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. That was really, really fun. Um, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so if you liked what you heard, give us a subscribe, a like, a comment, and uh, we'd really appreciate it. And then you can hear more from us. Yeah. And before we sign off, just a thank you to Chris Matthews for putting this challenge out there to people, challenge or opportunity, <laughs> however you want to see it, for people in our community to really highlight what an amazing community the Christmas Pass is. Uh, and we are both very grateful to live here and to be a part of growing it into something even better down the road. Right. So, yeah. yeah. And in these uh, uncertain times, we hope that everybody is safe at home and healthy. And until next time.